Lord, we appreciate you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, we thank you for another time to learn at your feet. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for another time to worship at your presence. Thank you. Lord, we say may your name be glorified. Amen. May your name be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let somebody shout the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we go welcome to church this morning? Welcome to church this morning. First of all, we thank you. I'm happy to see you this morning. I'm happy to see you this morning. I'm excited to see you. I'm excited to see you. See your beautiful face, your handsome face. See your beautiful and handsome faces. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So, the children, are they going now? The teenagers. Okay, teenagers are going. Will the children go as well? They will go when okay. they return. Children, just sit down for now. Not get time. Or teenagers can go to the teenage church. Let's put our hands together for them as they go. Okay, so last week, when we started, I asked who could remember what was we were called two weeks ago. And a few people answered. One of them was one sister Chinyu. I haven't seen her yet. And uh, sister sorry, I forgot her name. Jane. Sister Jane answered. Who else answered last week? Okay, so I think just Sister Chinyu and Sister Jane answered last week. Praise the Lord. And I'm happy. Please let's put our hands together for Sister Chinyere and Sister Jane. It means that, or what I mean is that after they learned, they went back home and they rehearsed what they learned. They, they pondered on what they learned. And that was why they did not forget. And we saw the school department, we see them as very special. Today, some people also would have that opportunity of be very special to Sunday school. Of course, we are all special, but some people will have that opportunity again. So please participate as much as you can. However, we are more concerned about those who participate first. Why do I feel that? Because I'm talking about these people are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who can remind us of what we were taught last week? Who can try? If you can't try, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm <laughs> um, How can you remember? You were not here. But you remember? Okay. <laughs> I love this. Okay, you can do right? Brother, brother, do right. Okay, please go for it. Increasing spiritual knowledge. Wonderful. Let's put our hands together for him. He wasn't here, but he got the, he got uh, can, you pick, can you tell us one or two things that you learned from the body of the teaching? Unfortunately, no. Ah. <laughs> ah. So you permit, I mean, we're happy you gave the shot. But please, you permit us because now the main question is really around those who can remember one or two things they were taught. I know if you think through, you probably remember some. Okay, so today the teaching is, or who else wants to try? Okay, can you remember one? Um, I think it's bigger closer to God. Okay, yeah. that's good. Very correct. Let's put that together for Jesus. <laughs> you know when the Bible says one will chase one thousand, two will be ten thousand to flight. Is that what's happening today? But have you teamed up, right? You can't go to do this. Alright. So they got it correct, at least it. So because of that, we'll just move into today's one. Deepening spiritual knowledge. So, Brother Obasi started by teaching us on spiritual knowledge three weeks ago. And then last week we learned about increasing spiritual, increasing in spiritual knowledge. And today we're going to learn deepening spiritual knowledge. Praise the Lord. So it's going, it's um, progressing from just spiritual knowledge where we learned about, I mean, when you graduate from picking milk, 
the milk of God's word and you want to go deeper into, into knowing God and you go into strong meat from Hebrews 5, what's in there about. So that was what Brother Pastor thought about when you begin to grow your desire for spiritual knowledge and you begin to search, this, uh, you begin to find out more about the scripture, the mysteries in the scripture, the mystery of Christ and the bride, and, uh, and the, and the bride which is the church, etc. Right? And then we learn about increasing the spiritual knowledge. We learn things like, let me not say it, and then today we're going to be deepening in that spiritual knowledge. All right, the next slide. So this will be the, the um, this will be the agenda. We look at two ways of deepening spiritual knowledge. One of them is through meditation, and the second one is through waiting on the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we we'll focus on these two today very quickly. If you go to the next slide, I think yeah, the introduction. So I'll try to do it. But I think, um, if you go to the next slide, let's see, I think there's a question. Yes. What are the three ways of obtaining spiritual knowledge? That's why I didn't want to say it, because it was taught last week. Three ways of obtaining spiritual knowledge, which we learned last week. Who can remember? Who can remember? Ah, Sister Jane. Great. This is good. Hey, you, all of you on this side, you are falling by hand. And, okay. Please go for it. It's not just about having the Bible. Correct. And putting that under your pillow and mm -hmm. thinking that works. It's about um, picking it up and trying to read and understand. Trying to read and understand. Searching. Searching the Word of God. That's one way, and she's very correct. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Who else wants to, wants to try? Bible, a memory verse, next slide. 
says from first Timothy 4, verse 15. Okay, this is the King James now. It says, Meditate upon these things of the word of God. Give yourself wholly to them. That is, give yourself wholly, completely to the world. That your profiting may appear to all. Give yourself wholly, completely, in the place of meditation. Let your world be in you and you in the world. That both of you become one. You know, when we pray and we say we want to be like Jesus, the Bible says Jesus was the word of God made flesh. We are supposed to be that same word of God made flesh. One with God. You see, so I think in um, Paul's, uh, in one of his episodes, Paul was, Paul was saying that we are the um, we are the episodes that men read. In other words, we are the word of God that those who are not born again, they should be reading and seeing us. They should, just the same way Jesus Christ is the word of God made flesh, the same way we should be. Give yourself wholly to Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're going to look at meditation and then we look at waiting on the Lord. Those are two major things we're going to discuss today before we close. All right. So the next, now the first lesson outline is on meditation. What is meditation? Hmm. If you go to the next slide, next one. Meditation is deeper than studying. Remember last week we learned about ways to increase in spiritual knowledge. And one of it was studying, the other one seeking, the other one searching. You can search the scripture to find out God's truth. You can seek for different areas of the scripture to find out even more. Using different, you know, you know, finding correlation between the Old Testament and the New Testament, doing all of those things, it could take time and it's very valuable. You can also study. You go deep into studying why this happened, why that happened, why this other one happened. Praise the Lord. You find out deep truths from the world by searching, seeking, and studying. Our pastor, um, our pastor Mrs. yesterday talked about when you study, you also take notes. You study as if you are studying for an exam. Find out spiritual, you know, study to show yourself approved of God. You know, when you study very well and you take an exam and you pass, you will be approved. Praise the Lord. So study that way to show yourself approved. However, meditation is deeper than that. And if, uh, topic today, our lesson, uh, our topic today is deepening in spiritual knowledge. Meditation is deeper than that. It's like when you are eating, when you put food in your mouth, you have to chew it. You have to swallow it. You have to allow the food to transmit its nutrients to make you nourished, right? Now, that's what meditation is like. When you have the Word of God, you take it in. You know, there was a prophet, you see, I didn't do it, I was supposed to do it yesterday. There was a prophet that said, Thy words have I found, and I did eat them. Yeah, I think it was Jeremiah. You guys are supposed to remind me because we are all students. <laughs> but you guys are thinking I have the answer. Guess what? I don't. Praise the Lord. So we are doing this together. So the prophet said, Thy words have I found, and I did eat them. And I did eat them. So that's the way meditation is. You, you, you have studied, you have done this, you have done that, but you just pick a particular scripture or story and you begin to meditate on it. How many of you have had this experience? You are meditating on a particular scripture or passage or matter from the scripture and it consumes you to the point that you are no longer conscious if there are people around. How many of you have had that experience? You are just there alone. And you can be there for hours. And the, and the painful thing is that when you are there meditating, if you are doing it correctly, time moves very, I mean, time moves very fast on the earth. But if you've not really gotten access to what you, God wants you to gain access to, it will look like it's taking time. But in reality, time is moving very fast. Because you are in that process of digesting the world, 
You are that process of allowing the word to sit in your heart and to bear fruit. Does it make sense? Yeah. That's what meditating does. And for people who say, I've never heard God before, I've never heard the voice of God before, if you check very well, it's because they have not spent time meditating on the word of God enough. There is no how you would meditate and you would not hear the voice of God. There is no how. Because you would think it's your thought. It is not your thought. It's most likely it's the word of God speaking to you. In that place of meditation. Because your spirit is now connecting with spirit, and then God is downloading, you will begin to download information to your spirit in the place of meditation. So that's why our memory verse says, give yourself wholly to it. Wholly. Wholly to it. Some Christian got upset one day. He was very angry, very vibrant in the church. And he said, I'm going to keep this Bible aside and I'm going to deal with you. So he was, he had not given himself wholly <laughs> to the world. It's like you give your life to Christ and you come back and you take your life back. It's not good. So meditation helps you to be more with God. The next one says, another thing about meditation we should know is that meditation is recommended by God. Remember Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Who can recite Joshua chapter 1 verse 8? Okay, ah, thank you. Yes, go for it. Who else wants to go for it? Are you ready? We'll do it together. You see the first part, I'll see the other part. <laughs> <laughs> What will I say now? <laughs> Let's put our hands together for her. There was something that you did very small. Very small, yeah. Who can say that very small part that was missed? But well, that was good as like 90% actually. To observe to do. To observe to do all that is written. Yeah. Yeah. And then that shall. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. He says, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate here day, day, day and night. Day and night. Does this show us a pattern here? Day and night. That means in the morning, now this is by no way formula, but it's just showing you a pattern. In the morning, you wake up, you meditate on the scripture. At night, before you sleep, when everywhere is quiet, you also meditate on the scripture. It's like it's like eating. You know, there are a lot of people in the Christian I know they are not here. Who physically they may look very strong, very powerful, very pious, charismatic. But someone who has a spiritual eye, and most times demons, they have these spiritual eyes even more. They can tell how nourished a believer is or not. So sometimes the believer looks healthy, but the realm of the spirit is looking malnourished. What may just be missing in the meditation. It's not eating. It's not eating enough food. It's not eating, it's not eating enough balance diet. I mean, in fact, sometimes demons can even see, and I'm joking now, they can see that the head may be big, but the body is malnourished. Question. You, you, <laughs> you know, lollipop is round, the head is big, lollipop, right? And the body is, you know what? Too much head knowledge, too much head knowledge. But they have not digested what they have been eating so that the body is nourished. And that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, demon approach, uh, some, uh, demons approached some seven sons of Sceva. They were trying to cast the demon out. And they said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? And the demon tra trampled upon this man, tortured them, because he saw that these guys did not have the right stature to stand before me. Praise the Lord. So meditation is recommended by God, and that was what God was telling Joshua. This word should not depart from thy mouth, that shall meditate there. You know the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth, the mouth speaks. When you are faced with challenges, what do you see? But you, are, you see, because challenges sometimes they don't give you hints. Hey, I'm a challenge, I'm coming. No. 
or hey, a crisis, I'm coming. No. You won't know. They just sometimes they come suddenly. They come suddenly. And Peter and the disciples, they saw Jesus Christ walking on water. They were scared. But not just that, the sheep was being tossed. And at that point, the disciples, they were all afraid. And then Peter stood up and said, if you are my master, bid me come. Can you imagine that? That means Peter must have been meditating on most of the things that Jesus Christ was saying. Because how come he was really one out of the other, uh, out of the twelve? And Jesus said, come, okay, you left, okay, come. And Peter began to walk on water. Can you imagine? But then he looked around and he saw the wind. The Bible says he came to point stirrups. And his eyes were moved away from Jesus. And he began to sing. And he cried out, help me. And Jesus stretched out his hand and raised him. Guess what? Peter was the only disciple of Jesus that walked on water. So in, that, in the face of that challenge, you can imagine what was going through his mind. If you are my master, tell me to come. That thing did not come from anywhere. It came from the abundance of his heart. Out of the abundance of your heart, a man speaks. Right? So some people are in a challenge, challenging situation, and they are shouting, why me? Oh God, how can you shout, why me? You're already victimizing yourself. How much of the word of God are you eating? Because that's, at that time, that's what should come out. Uh, someone said, when you squeeze an orange, the juice comes out. If the situations of life squeezes us, what will come out of us? Are we going to join the devil to condemn ourselves? Or are we going to, based on what we've eaten, the word of God, to uh, project ourselves to fulfill, I mean, fulfilling the word of God and, uh, and uh, defeating the works of that? So we should meditate on God. Now, also, meditation takes time, like I said, it may take time, it may take some time, but when you're able to do it, correctly, with the right motive, you realize that there's this relief and release you will have to your spirit. The next point. So, meditating on, what are the things we should meditate on? Things that we can meditate on, number one, we can meditate on the works of God. Nature, what God has created. We can meditate on those things. Those things may help us realize how awesome and wonderful God is. The next point. We can also meditate on the sufferings of Christ. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3. Hebrews 12, verse 3. We can meditate on the sufferings of Christ. Hebrews 12, verse 3 says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your mind. So most times the reason why people give up in life is because they are not meditating so much on the sufferings of Christ, what Christ had to go through, the, the price he placed on each and every one of us. If we know the price that Christ and God placed on each soul, then when we go through life, we'll know that, look, no matter how challenging this situation is, I'm coming out on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming out victorious on the other side. Job said something. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Imagine. Because if we know what Christ went through for me, there is no how Christ will see me in this position and leave me to perish after he has gone through everything. Like he wasted his time if this situation was meant to consume him. No. So we can meditate on the sufferings of Christ, what he went through. And that will help pattern our lives. The third thing we can meditate on is on the end of life. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. We can also meditate on the end of life. This one, I like it because this one helps to stare ourselves properly. Deuteronomy 32, verse 7 says, Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show you, he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. He said, Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show you. Ask thy elders, and they will tell you. So we can meditate on the end of life. And you'll be grateful that when you enter into eternity, you will be with Jesus Christ. 
But you know, God declares the end of the thing from the beginning. You see? So the same way, I think it was uh, in the book of Psalm, the Psalm, the Psalm said, teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. You see, most times, eh, most times, when you, when you tell where you are going, when you try to define the end goal, in business, they do it a lot, right? They call it, they try to define the business case. <laughs> They define, you know, they define, okay, where are we going? And then they begin to break down what they call value drivers. What, 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 what are the things driving us? How do we get there? How do we know we've got the critical success factors? If you can tell where you are going, I think it was in the book of Proverbs. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So if you can think of the end of life, how do you want to live this earth? You meditate on it, of course, in line with scripture, looking at all the promises that God has made, what God wants you to achieve, where you are now, and that delta, what you're supposed to do to get there, or how you're supposed to be positioned to get there, it will help you to stay your life in the way that God expects. But that comes by meditation. Because life is so quick. It's in this UK that I found. Oh, I try to be serious all through, but sometimes a joke comes to my mind. It's in this UK that I found that the world moves very, very fast. In Nigeria, the world does not move this fast. I think it's because of bills and rent. It moves fast before you know it's already 28. You know, when you this month start, moves fast in this UK. It doesn't happen in any other part of the world. Only UK. I don't like it. Praise the Lord. Meditate on the end of life, and hopefully that was the direction. Now we're going to move to the next point. If you move forward, there's a question: How can you avoid being distracted while meditating? We'll just take two answers. Who, who can tell us how you can avoid being distracted while meditating? In fact, you know that you don't only have to meditate in the morning or at night. You can meditate through the day, even while you're going through your business, even while you're faced with challenges. Then, this week that passed, I was in a difficult position. Someone called me asking for something. You know those positions, like a dilemma, where you know that if you answer this way, you are either putting somebody on the line, if you answer this other way, you are putting your integrity on the line. And I just think, God, help me. You know, help me. I began to meditate on what to do. You know? Okay, how can we do that? avoid being distracted while, while meditating? Who can tell us practical ways? Yes, sister. Okay. First, uh, first of all, um, probably choose early hours of the morning when mm -hmm. others are still asleep. When others are still asleep. Wonderful. Let's put us together, Jesus. Probably choose early hours of the morning when others are still asleep. Just to avoid distraction. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, sister Sophia. Sister Pamela. Yes, yes sister Sophia. Staying focused. I think it was a pastor's wife too. I think it was last week that said these gadgets can also distract us. You know that sometimes you need to turn it off so that you stay focused on it. Because whether you like it or not, in fact, this one you can try it at home. Whenever you want to meditate, whenever you want to spend time praying, the devil somehow will always bring something to distract you. If it is not something physical, it may be something in your mind telling you, have you achieved this thing? This thing, how, how are you going to buy this thing? Knock it off. <laughs> Knock it off to stay focused. He doesn't want you to have, he knows that there are treasures in that place of meditation. God bless you. So stay focused. Who else wants to tell us? And, and that's why fasting can help. If there is anything that keeps someone focused, it is fasting. Because fasting weakens you to the point that you can't think of any other thing. You just want God. You are weak. You are tired. You just want God. So when you are distracted, that Jehovah will always say people who are struggling with some kind of saints in their life, that the problem they are not fasting. If you fast, it will be easy to overcome those things. Yes, for me, I mean. I wanted to say as we, we say, switch off the gadget. 
Use the manual Bible, manual one. It may take time, but it's worth it. Eh? To the book of Shadrach, you look for it. And you confirm whether there's even a book like Shadrach <laughs> in the Bible. <laughs> oh, I can't believe some people really thought that there's a book of Shadrach in this church. <laughs> Sister, thank you very much, ma'am. Trying to make the environment active, spiritually active for yourself because if not, you can sleep off. Yes. Try to make the environment spiritually active for yourself. I like this one because this one has dealt with me a lot. You know, when you're praying, and it may not happen to all of you, you're praying, you know, I like this one from Bishop Wayne. When you're praying and you're pacing, and sometimes you will just have that force. Righteous, uh, 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 post righteous syndrome to want to. Sorry to say, right? People have different stands. I'm talking for me personally. You just want to kneel down. Sometimes, like the right thing to do to show God. I mean, you know when you know motivational speakers or you know very active you know preachers say if you cannot beat the battle on your knees, you know sometimes the devil can use it. So I'm, I'm trying to pray, and they will say just just go on your knees. You know, that's why Brother Femi told us his descendant. So I feel many times. Just go on your knees. It sounds very spiritual. I'm praying and I go on my knees. That's the end. It's for me, that lying down. And I, and I, why pray? Before I go, I wake up. <laughs> wake up from here. I was praying actively. And they okay, just tell me, I mean, I, it looks so spiritual. The more people start crying. I say, just lie to show God. Reference. <laughs> Morning. It's your daughter that will come and drink you. <laughs> God will deliver us. In Jesus' name. So fact, make this the environment spiritually active. Find a way to charge the environment so that you don't sleep off. So that you don't sleep off. Ah, very beautiful. Okay, let's move to the next one. Does anybody want to say any other thing? Okay, so the next one. Now we'll be very fast now. You want to say something? Now, waiting on the Lord. This is the second way to deepen spiritual knowledge. Waiting on the Lord. If you move forward, there are some things that God will, that you will not find out by studying or by searching or even by only meditating. Some of those things are revealed in God's time. And that's the place of waiting on the Lord. God, you may have studied, searched, but that matter, you may not know it. Daniel chapter 10. Okay. Okay, yes. So that matter, you may not, you may not know it, but it's in God's time, and God reveals it by His mercy. He would reveal those things to you by His mercy. You may have searched the scripture. You know, Daniel chapter 10, Daniel was waiting about the matter he understood, but it took until God's time before God sent the angel to reveal to him those mysteries. Right? So, and this is where the sovereignty of God plays in. That's why we said meditation may take time. It may take some days. Of course, not saying that you're in that place for a, for a full day or days. Of course, you can be there as well. But it may take a while. But you will not let God go until this matter is revealed. So you are, that's why the memory verse is very key. He said, give yourself wholly to this thing called meditation, to this thing called waiting on the Lord. Give yourself wholly to it. And in God's time, He will reveal that mystery. Praise the Lord. So, be expectant also when you wait on the Lord. And the difference also between waiting on the Lord and just studying and searching is that studying, searching the scripture and the rest, they may be tiresome. But when you wait on the Lord, it is refreshing. You wait for hours, for days, praying and all that. When you come out of it, especially when you go to a release in your spirit, you feel this, refre there's this refreshing feeling that I've, 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 I've hit a note in the realm of the spirit. Praise the Lord. And let's be expectant as well. And God will help us. God will help us in Jesus' name. Alright. Um, so we're going to do something right now. And um, first of all, I want to thank everyone for participating, for listening, for contributing. Um, before we answer that question, if we have time, I doubt we will. I'm going to introduce our Sunday school coordinator, our Sunday school superintendent, special of... <laughs> Pastor Sam Chirola to come forward for the next session.
section of this Sunday school. Yeah, let's all be expectant. So let's put our together for Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much for paying attention. And can you go back to our other passage for today? First um, Timothy chapter 4, verse 13 to 16. Now, before we get into this section of the Sunday school, uh, I just want us to know that what we are going to do now is just a symbol of what will happen at the end of time. You know, um, reward comes, and reward comes when least expect. Um, and that's why the Bible says, do not be weary in doing good. Yeah, so we, the Sunday School Department will reward um, a number of people who have, um, who by our assessment, think have paid attention to, to the series that we uh, just completed today. Three Sundays ago, we started the series increasing our knowledge, spiritual knowledge. And then, you know, we talked about, you know, Searching, we talked about seeking, we talked about studying, and today we went deeper. We said meditating and waiting on the Lord. You can meditate on substance. If there is no substance, there is nothing to meditate on. So when we look at the big skyscraper, what goes, what's under the ground is far, far mightier than what you see on the surface. So for us to really be able to get into this meditation mode and being able to wait upon the Lord, we need to have God in substance. And I think that's what the teacher today has told us. You got your substance by studying the Word of God. It's not start from studying the Word of God. You cannot study the Word of God when you don't have access, mm. as it were, to the Word. And because we're looking at the end from the beginning, um, we want to encourage and help people to study the Word. So the Sunday School Department will be giving our study Bible this morning. I will be giving it out to people who have participated actively in this past three series. I'm going to call Pastor to help us give this gift out and we will pray for them. So we have four study Bibles. Can we call them the four study Bibles? Beautiful looking study Bibles. They are not just uh, beautiful looking, but they are a great resource that helps you to really study. And so this is the part of practicalizing what we've been looking at in the past three weeks. So to study, we want to encourage you to study. We want to be a part of that motivation to be able to study so that when you study, you can seek, you can search, then you have something worthy to meditate on. Part of the, today's lesson, I talked about things that we meditate on, we meditate on the Word of God. So when we study, when we store ourselves up with the word of God, then we're able to study, to meditate on this word. And when we wait on God, God is always speaking. But God will speak to us through the quantity and quality of his word that we have in our life. So Pastor, please, can you step up? Can we put our hands together for Pastor? <laughs> so just like I said, quietly, the Sunday School Department have been observing. And we've been taking notes. Um, so, it is the day of recording <laughs> as it were. So, I'm going to call names out and then, please, as they come out, let's just put their hands together for them. There's going to be another day of recording. The idea is to motivate us to get actively involved in the Sunday school. So, if you're not getting the Bible today or you're not getting the gift today, don't worry, your day is coming. Amen. There's always another opportunity. So, please put your hands together with me. If Sister Chino is in church, Sister Chiri, can you please step forth? She was not in church this morning, but she was actively involved last week. Sunday. Sister Chiri, please can you please step forward? Let's give her a hand. Sister Chiri, can you please step forward? Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the story about me. It's the first time I've been in church before. It's the opportunity to do it. Sister Rufoma, please step forward. Yeah. 
even in every situation of our life. He will speak to us. He will speak through his word. He will speak through his spirit. He will speak through counsel. He will speak through words of knowledge to us. Let us pray for that grace that we wait long enough to be able to receive from him in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the word again today. As you have spoken to us, we call Lord with us that these words will take root down in our spirits and it will bring forth fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our lives will be transformed by the revealing of the word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord.
worship the Lord. Thank the Lord for bringing us the last Sunday in the month of June. Hallelujah. And the Lord has given you so many testimonies. Thanks. I just want you to open your mouth and bless the Lord oh, thank you, with all your heart this morning. Raise the sound of thanksgiving to your Father. If your heart is full of thanks, just worship the name of the Lord who reigns forever. The God who has not allowed you to be put to shame. The Lord who has always come for you.
I'm not just for you, I'm not just going to be a rewarder. I'm going to be your reward. Uh, imagine when God is now your reward. That's deep. Hallelujah. Maybe when I get a little bit more revelation, we'll get into that. But today, we are going to start with number one, those that God will reward will be those who are, what did he say? Diligent seekers. Diligent seekers. Those who diligently seek me. Diligent seekers. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, many people are coming to church. Many people are answering and identifying with Christians. And that's great. That's brilliant. That's superb. But a little bit more than that is why are you identifying yourself as a Christian? Why are you coming to church? Do you want to belong to the body of believers? Why? What is the reason? What is the motive? What is the intent behind what you're doing? Here, God, the scripture clearly says it that He is a rewarder because, as it appears, I'm not going to play games with you. God is not saying He's going to reward everybody. That's not what the scripture says. He's not saying that he's going to, everybody's going to get out of the world. He said he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So there's a qualification to that. Those who diligently seek him. I once told a story in this church. When we moved here newly, a man, I can tell the story again, a man, what it means to seek, that story is about seeking, seeking, because he hasn't left me. You see the grass, big grass out there in, in, by the church. Now, what Christmas of um, winter, winter in I think either 2013 or 2014, that's when we just moved to this place. Now, it was covered with about 15 inches of snow. I mean, it was snow that year, snow upon snow. Then a man came with his daughter to play. They came with their sleigh. And then they were riding in that uh, snow for hours, maybe two hours or so. They were just there enjoying themselves. And then that was when the Samsung Galaxy phone, the latest model at that time, came out. And the man came with that phone. The phone belonged to the wife, and the phone was white. You know where the story is heading to now, man. The phone dropped in the thick snow and got missing while they were enjoying themselves. So, when they finished, they got the, the, the man started looking for the phone. And I looked through the window from the house, and I saw him, you know, searching for the phone. Uh, I didn't do anything. After some minutes, I saw him still searching. And then I couldn't see him again. He went back home. The wife said, you, we cannot have, you must go and get this phone. <laughs> so he came back by now it's dark. You know, of course, by 4, 3 30 already on a, on winter day, it's already dark here. By 3 30, 4 o'clock, it was already dark. So this was the man from 3 30 to about 5 o'clock. He was still searching for the phone. I now came down. So what is this, sir? He said, the phone is missing. The first question I asked, what is the color of the phone? He said, white. <laughs> I know we are in for the trouble. <laughs> He was seeking. I remember, for those who remember that story, I used to have a set of floodlights. I bought them uh, in floodlights. So I said, how can I help this man? This man, he has been here for some hours. So I came, uh, wore, changed my boots, not, not any kind of you, so a special boots I wore, put on the floodlights, uh, powered it from the church men's here, put flag everywhere in the field. And then I said to him, we have to sign this and we practice. He has a rig. I got two rigs. I got, gave him one. I took one. He said, we are going to go line by line. So we take a line from the end of the field there and we run to the other end. And then we were combing, combing, line by line. Line by line. That's seeking, isn't it? You agree with me that's seeking? Yes. So effort. Light was deployed, we, we, you know. The man himself, when he saw that this is serious, he rolled up his sleeves. <laughs> serious business. That's seeking. And I think it was on the 11th row, Kobe, he picked up the phone. Hallelujah. 
and my, the phone was not damaged or anything, and it was not lost. Hallelujah. God is looking for those who will come for him. When you were talking about this, this on the school team, we were talking about avoiding distractions. And keeping our knowledge and looking for God. God has a parameter he's checking, he's using to check. Those who will conscientiously, those who will intentionally seek after him. He is a rewarder of those who will diligently seek him. Diligence means that you don't do it only on Sunday and on Mondays you are not seeking the Lord. Hello? Diligence does not mean that you only do God. You only do church. You only do Christianity on Sundays with the body of believers. Just for those two hours, we spend, the two hours we spend in service. Diligence means that even after that, you carry on. It's a routine that you have subscribed to, that you can do. The prayer is not only when we come to church and raise the prayer point, that that's not just prayer for you. Diligence means that you pray even outside the church. Hello? Diligence. He is in the order of those who deliberately seek him. Those who seek the Lord, the Lord will reward. That's what he's saying. He will reward. He knows how to organize his own pay package, his own reward package. He will reward them. He said he will definitely. He's a rewarder of those who seek him. Hallelujah. I mean, time will fail me. I would have taken us to First Chronicles chapter 16, the whole of First Chronicles chapter 16, and then we'll begin to see some people, persons that were seeking the Lord, the criteria, he said, there will be joy with them. Hallelujah. You will have joy as you seek the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And you know, just, just, just to mention, I hope I'm not step going to step on toes today, but if I, I step on toes, that's good. Hallelujah. If, if, if I just pause to say that, if we begin to ask everyone who is here, why are you, we won't do that. Hallelujah. <laughs> why did you become a Christian? Why are you here? Why are you, are you really seeking? Why is there, is there, is there anything, you know, people come to church? Well, I, okay, let me ask you. I can ask them, what are the reasons that people go to church? I'll, starting from, let me give you a, 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 a a cue or a link, a hint. Some people go to church because they want to do business. They want business connection. When they come to church, they meet people, they get known so that they can have a, a product market to sell their products. That's good. It's good you network. Hello? But is that all you is that the reason? I know that those people are not here. Yes. <laughs> you are seeking the Lord, I believe so. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Not just for business. Doing business is good. Cool. Having connections and knowing a few people who can patronize you is great. But that's not the reason why you should seek it. Some people, well, let me confess my sin. A time in my life, I was going to try to get a girlfriend. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 But that's and so you know the, you know the beautiful thing about God. The beautiful thing about God is that even the girlfriend I didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> it was only after I found God that I found my wife. Hello. Hi. Uh, so. Some people go to church earlier, talking about uh, you know, earlier on when I was not younger. Some people go to church for many things. Some come to church because of positions. Hello? So that they can identify. And some come to church or go to church because of title, because of fame. These things are happening, we know. They are there. But God is saying to all us today that all the ones or all the reasons why people go to church look, appear to be seeking him, they are not seeking him. For that, he is not going to reward. 
He is going to reward those who are diligent in seeking him. When the eyes of the leadership of the church is not there, when the eyes of the brothers or the sisters that know you very well are not there, will you still pray? Will you still seek the Lord? Will you still do those things that you ought to do to connect with God? Diligently seeking. Hallelujah. Say you will reward. Hallelujah. Number two, because of time, let's move on. Number two, reason. By the way, just on that one, before we go to number two, sisters, hello. Don't mind. Now, pray that God will give you discernment, particularly your married sisters. Amen? Amen. Pray that God will give you discernment so that you discern. Uh, uh, so the scripture shall talk about discernment. You know, referencing one of the lessons we have. So that you can discern those who are just coming to church to see for somebody, for a relationship. Hello? Hi. You know, the church is a very good place. You get well-behaved girls. You get this. They just come. They don't have intention to seek the Lord, they are seeking to get a relationship. And they can put up a few Sundays or a few months. In fact, some can even last for some years and just complain so that they get what they want to get. And that's why we sometimes, some stories we hear, even as pastors, some stories. In fact, some of them last long enough that they even get to be part of the furniture of the church. And we hear stories, some heartbreaking stories. And they say, but they got married in church. But the brother, they were singing together in choir. I'm not putting the choir on the spot. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but one was seeking something else. Not seeking the Lord. He was seeking something else. We will seek the Lord. Yeah. And because God has promised us that those who seek him, they will find him. Hallelujah. And, and, but today we are talking about being a reward. He will reward them. He will reward them handsomely. Number two. Number two category of people that God seek in, they are givers. Hallelujah. Amen. And of course, you know, I don't talk much about God. I hear talking about money and all that. But so I'm not going there. Givers. Money is just one of them. But let's see what the scripture talked about. God rewards givers. Matthew, give us Matthew chapter 10, 30, 41 and 42. That's a very good scripture to talk about. Give us. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. So when, we read, when we read this word, I'm going to ask you a question. What can you give? And you see it in this scripture. There's, any, there's something that all of us here can give. And that is not money. One to let you go. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Receive a prophet in the name of a prophet. Shall, uh, we'll, we'll break it down. What does it mean to receive a prophet in the name of a prophet? What does it mean? He shall receive one, a prophet's reward. Let's continue reading. Number two. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of the righteous man shall receive shall receive the righteous man's reward. Hallelujah. So whatever is the righteous man due for, whatever God is going to give that righteous man, because you receive that righteous man, you receive the righteous man's reward. Let me give us the next verse. Give us the next verse. It makes it clearer. The next verse makes it clearer. The keeper. Go on to the go. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of water in the name of a disciple. He shall by no means lose his reward. Hallelujah. So what is the pass mark for giving them a cup of water? Hello? And there's nobody here or nobody that is so poor that you cannot afford a cup of water. As long as you have a house or you live somewhere, there must be water somewhere there. So you cannot have a cup of water. And before this message, 
suddenly a woman drove this week, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, this week I just come past, drove into this compound and knocked at the door and said to me, I need a cup of water. Oh. Yes. So I said, I need this cup. Knocked at the door, I need a cup of water. I said, I come in. And then she came, I brought a glass of water. And then she opened, before then she opened up, she said, do you remember me? I said, no, I don't remember you. She now reminded me something that happened about four years ago, how she came and requested that I pray for her friend who was very ill. She said to me that she was driving past here, she came under conviction to come and return thanks to God. I say, look, pastor, I came, I requested for you to pray, and you pray, my friend, four years ago, four years ago, that was before COVID, that my friend got well, and my friend, still, my friend is still well, and my friend is doing fine now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That she was getting to ask that one about, and she nearly had an accident there, and then she was just packed one side, and wondering what, what to do. Probably she was a believer. At the time she was talking to me, I didn't know she was a believer. And then that she, the, 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 the Holy Spirit laid it upon her heart to turn back and come to this place and say thank you to God. Not to say thank you to me, but to say thank you to God. And I said, oh, okay, is that what the cup of water is all about now? <laughs> My day is made. Hallelujah. <laughs> he who gives these little ones only a cup of cold water will not lose his reward. What that means is that for every time you give even a cup of water, God is taking attendance. God is marking some register. Hello? Did he not tell us? Did the scripture not tell us that many people will come to him and say, that day, oh, I didn't. He said, no, no, no. He said, I was thirsty and you didn't give me a cup of water. I was hungry and you didn't give me this. He said, where, where did I see you? No, no. He said, no. I said, you didn't do it to other people. The same way you didn't do it to me. And to the people on the right, he said, you gave me the power. Oh, where did we even meet you in the first place? You did it to others. That's the same way you did it for me. Please, you will not lose it. You know the problem we have? I must say this. The problem we have is that many times we are not waiting and we are not hanging on for the, we are not going for the reward from the Lord. We want the one from men. That's a problem. That's a dynamic. Hello? Okay. Give us Galatians chapter. That's what, what Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 wanted to address. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. We have the, the last scripture we read, one of the scriptures. Well, I have two more. But Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. You know, it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose our souls. In this season, we will receive our reward if we fail not. In this season, we will receive our reward if we fail not. The problem is that we are looking for this reward to come from man. And there's nothing too bad about it, actually. It's also good that when somebody does some good things or do some good things to us, we do good things as well. But Please, much more than that, wait and more, be more interested, be more interested in God's reward than the reward of man. Hello? This scripture, in this scripture, Paul knew that there is a tendency that you do good to people and you expect them to do good back to you and they will not. How many of you are there? In fact, sometimes you do good to people, what they reward you with is evil. They do something, you just oh, have to discourage you. And part of the something of the scripture was telling us this morning that the enemy knows how to know that there's something beautiful there, and then he'll go and steal it. Mm -hmm. How he steals it, how he steals this thing is one of the ways he will steal our blessing is to make us to think that human beings are going to the one that are going to give us back. And do good back unto us, and we don't wait for the problem. We, we don't wait for the reward. You will not lose your heart. Amen. He said, and do not lose heart. 
Don't give up. Hallelujah. Amen. Perhaps there's somebody here that God is talking to today by the message. He wants to tell you he is a reward. He is a reward. Don't expect a reward to come from the way you know a reward will come. Hello? Don't expect a reward to come from the angles you've calculated or you are anticipating that a reward will come. No, no, no. It may come that way. God may choose to reward you that way. He may choose a different way, but he is a reward. Hallelujah. Thomas, let me, will, you remember that woman in the scripture? That woman that in first king, chapter second king chapter four. It's actually second king chapter four. The woman did not give a lie. The, when we read that scripture, he said he understood that this is a man of God. This is a child of God. And he just talked, spoke to the husband and said, let her come, let him come in. Let him come here and stay. You know what the woman gave? Space. Hello? Did you read the scripture he gave Elisha money? No. We somehow bastardize these things and make it as if it is money. Give me the story about money only. But he gave her, she gave her, both her and the husband, they gave the man of God space. The only this other thing they did was they, they had a bed and they put a table and a ramp. There for the man. Did they receive a reward? Yes. One day the man of God said, Go and read the story, 2 Kings chapter 4. The man of God said, What can we do? What can we cause heaven to do for this woman? Every time she treats us very well, what can we do? The, the woman, they asked the woman, What do you want? The woman said, I don't need anything. I'm well to do. I'm well, I'm sorted. They had to say to the boss, That time the husband was still a good guy. And as he was saying, he had in the spirit. Because later on, he has lost it out of grief. He had to be back to him. She does not have a child. And the husband is very old. The man proved that provoked a prophetic caution from the prophet. And the prophet said, whether you like it or not, whether you agree or not, that's me putting in my own paraphrase now. Whatever happens, you will have a child in nine months. But by, by the, according to the time of life, you have a child. The woman was even doubting. All the same, she received the reward. The child came. Hallelujah. So, in summary, two categories of people that must receive the reward are number one, those who are the seekers, the true seekers, those who diligently seek. Well, let's just leave them for these two now. And those who will give. Uh, please disabuse your mind from just taking money. Okay. It's good to give money. Because that's the legal tender. That's okay. But much more. Think deeply. Peter at the beautiful gate didn't have money to give. But he gave his prayer. He gave his anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Be prepared to always give something. Hallelujah. Amen. Be prepared to give something. Be prepared to give something. And you have no limit to what you can give. That meaning that even if you don't have money, give an idea. Give a suggestion. Give a prayer. Give a counsel. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when I study the scripture, there are a few things that fascinate me and, 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 and you know, make me feel very good, great. And most times they are not the greatest. You remember one day, a, a, um, what's his, Saul, Saul went out to look for the donkey that was missing. In his father's donkeys. And it was his servant that he took along. You know, the respect I have in my heart when I read that portion of the scripture, the respect I have for the servant who said to him, look, I have still have something that we can give to the man of God. The main boss was, all the resources he had were depleted. He was able to share with his Lord. May you have something to share. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you as we do so in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray.
Another time you talk about that sort of part I promised. When God is doing the work, as He was to Abraham. You put, put, we are going to pray with the famous scripture, Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek. So that's our first prayer point. I want you to pray. It was seeking first the kingdom of God. God knows those who are seeking. Who are seeking? What are you looking for? That's a good question. Don't answer. What are you seeking? What are you looking for? Are you looking for God? If you're hearing me, may have perhaps over the internet. Online. God is asking you, what are you looking for? What are you seeking? Many days, many, nowadays, many people are looking for likes. You know what I mean by likes? Social media likes. Just to promote themselves and take themselves to popularity. So some are looking for cheap fame or cheap glory. I want you to talk to the Lord and say, Lord, we sang that song, the choir sang it, as the day for the water so much so long Have 
I miss opportunities that you've arranged for me to receive a righteous person? For me to just give a, cold, a cup of cold water? It means the basics. For me just to do the basic minimum. And I have missed those opportunities. Forgive me, Lord. Moving forward, Lord, I have better understanding now. He said, whoever gives, even at that level, you will definitely get a reward. Coincidentally, we have the Sunday school team exemplified that today. Father, this shall be a reality in our life. We will receive rewards in the mighty name of Jesus. Take away discouragements. Take away all those suggestions from pit of hell that want to tell us otherwise. That want to move us away from being a blessing, from giving somebody something, from giving somebody, perhaps even space, even a little, uh, whatever it could be, Lord, help us. We will not miss it any longer. Amen. We will get it right the next time, and the next time, and the next time. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, Jesus. Make us indeed true givers in the mighty name of Jesus. To you be all the glory and all the In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together to Lord. Thank you, God.
the week, uh, the announcement uh, as follows. Yeah, so Sunday in the morning between 9 and 10 is the workers meeting. Uh, after that, we have the main service from 11 to, to close. Uh, Tuesday is Children's Day. I honestly, Mama, you that you people are not doing enough work. You are doing excellently. And, and I am learning with Jason. Thank God I have Jason in the house. Yeah, we are learning greatly. So please, if you are a parent and you are not joining that, you are missing out on great deal. We are all children in the house faith of the household of God. So we learn from what we teach the children as well. Thank you, Mama, and your team. You are doing great things. May God continue to reward you richly in Jesus' name. On Thursdays are Bible studies. It is where you can come and ask questions. Today is Sunday, you don't have to ask questions. You meet pastor after. But on Thursday, please feel free, log in, ask questions, and God will richly bless us as we do so in Jesus' name. If I have any other thing, if I forgot any other thing, I uh, sorry, uh, yesterday, please, can you please put your hands together for Papa? Yesterday, I had that in the 100 meters senior boys. <laughs> it's not easy. Let's put our hands together for him. Uh, the job is going to be ahead of the body uh, came over a second. Hallelujah! So we are trying, we are praying, hoping that next year we will do better. Please, let me see this opportunity to announce to us, female and males, if you are good in two things. I played to the police and I was beaten. So please, if you're better, come forward. Uh, if, you're, if you're better, if you can play the tennis, please, anything you can play, any sport you can play, you will rejuvenate the body and the mind and the spirit. So please come forward and let's participate in the household of faith. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we please rise as we take the grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Just before we share the grace, this is a thank you card that uh, our Mommy uh, Emily, uh, we know she was a celebrant. Hallelujah. Amen. She is saying a very big thank you to the church for hosting her 68th birthday. Let's Woo! go to the Lord. Amen. Amen. It was a week of celebration. We also, let's also celebrate uh, Pastor Sam. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are all saying thank you to the church for all the support and all the way we run around to have a make out of the God bless you. Amen. Amen. God will bless you and reward you. Amen. Uh, next Sunday, hallelujah. Amen. Next Sunday is Thanksgiving Sunday. Normally, we Thanksgiving is every day, but we set a day aside and we do it a little bit more elaborately. So, we will have a dedication. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, so, the school teacher had a baby. Do you remember? Yes. <laughs> the baby had a baby. Um, so, the baby will be coming to charge. Next Sunday. So come with your dancing shoes. Amen. Amen. And uh, we will celebrate. And after that, the week after, we have another baby dedication. Woo! <laughs> baby boy! Oh, bless you. This week, you will flourish in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will be with the words that you have already accused, the Lord will release them. Amen. They will be delayed no more. Amen. The Lord Himself will come through for you in the mighty name. Amen. He will make His mighty hand to rest upon you throughout this week in the mighty name. Amen. You will have testimonies. Amen. In fact, those who are wondering where and when will this happen, 
between now and even the next week, you will see a miracle. Amen. 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 Amen.